Who were the first farmers of Europe? Where did they come from? How did they spread across the continent? And what was their genetic history? I will answer these and many other questions in this video. Now, farming obviously changed human society forever. The transition from hunter-gatherer societies to stable farming communities allowed for larger populations to grow and more complex societies to develop. Now, before we look at the first farmers of Europe specifically, we need to look at farming more broadly. When and where did humans first start farming? Well, wild grains were collected and eaten from at least 100,000 years ago in Mozambique. The earliest evidence of small-scale cultivation of edible grasses is from around 21,000 BC in the north of modern Israel, from the Ohalo people. Although interesting early examples, these do not constitute farming as such. Our best guess is that farming originated in the Near East around 11,000 years ago, or around 9,000 BC, and soon made its way to the Aegean area through Anatolia, modern-day Turkey, and then into Greece. What crops did the first farmers grow, you may be asking? Well, they grew the eight Neolithic founding crops. Emmer wheat, einkorn wheat, hulled barley, peas, lentils, bitter vetch, chickpeas and flax. Rye may have been in the mix around this time as well, but this is debated. As far as livestock, pigs are thought to have been first domesticated in Mesopotamia around 11,000 years ago, followed by sheep. Cattle are thought to have been domesticated from the wild aurochs in the areas of modern Turkey and India around 8500 BC. So farming seems to have originated in the Fertile Crescent or the Near East around 11,000 years ago, but how and when did it spread into Europe? In line with this subject, there was an important debate within archaeological circles over this spread into Europe, whether it was the result of a migrating population of early farmers into Europe, or it was simply a spread of ideas into Europe. This debate seems to have been settled, but more on that later. Firstly, let's look at this beautiful map. This map shows the spread of farming across Europe. So as you can see, farming originated in the Near East, and then soon moved through Anatolia, to reach the western coast around the Aegean Sea and then over into Greece. And it's in this area around this time of 6000 BC that there's an important point to note. The early European farmers essentially split into roughly two groups at this time. One took a northern route across Europe, basically following the line of the Danube River, into Central Europe and, and mixed with different local hunter-gatherer populations, but they took a more northern route. Yet the other group took a more southern route, went through Italy and eventually reached the Iberian Peninsula. So basically the early European farmers took two routes across Europe, one north and one south. By around 6,000 years ago, farming had spread essentially across the entire European landmass and reached as far as the western islands of Britain and Ireland, which were home to small populations of hunter-fisher-gatherers before the first farmers arrived. Now, Britain serves as a good test case to understand whether the introduction of farming into Britain was the result of a new population migrating into Britain, or whether it was simply the local population adopting new ideas and new practices. A 2019 study published in Nature looked at this question in a paper titled Ancient Genomes Indicate Population Replacement in Early Neolithic Britain. As you can probably tell from the title, they found overwhelming support for agriculture being introduced to Britain by incoming continental farmers, with small geographically structured levels of hunter-gatherer ancestry. Genetic affinities with Iberian Neolithic individuals indicate that British Neolithic people were mostly descended from Aegean farmers who followed the Mediterranean route of dispersal. As these Neolithic farmer populations move west across Europe, they seem to have mixed to some degree at least with local hunter-gatherer populations in many instances. As Dr Tom Booth from the National History Museum explained, As this Neolithic population moved west, we can track cumulatively increasing levels of the local hunter-gatherer signatures in the genetics. So this just wasn't one population wiping the other out. Instead, they were mixing. The Aegean ancestry nearly always dominated because farming allowed these people to maintain much larger population sizes. 
Another study that looked at Europe more broadly found similar results in regards to this Aegean ancestry in a paper titled Early Farmers from Across Europe Directly Descended from Neolithic Aegeans. The study found a direct genetic link between Mediterranean and Central European early farmers and those of Greece and Anatolia, extending the European Neolithic migratory chain all the way back to southwestern Asia. Expanding on this, the authors write, the high levels of shared drift between a gene and all available early Neolithic genomes in Europe, together with the inferred unique drift between Neolithic genes and early Neolithic genomes from Northern Spain to the exclusion of early Neolithic genomes from Central Europe, indicate that Aegean Neolithic populations can be considered the root for all early European farmers, and that at least two independent colonisation routes were followed. Now before we go on to note what these early farmers may have looked like, I wanted to touch on a really interesting study that basically looked at how farming was introduced into Anatolia, whether it was through migration or the local population adopting new ideas. A really interesting study from 2019 looked at the subject by studying a 15,000 year old Anatolian hunter-gatherer and early farmers. The study begins by noting some context around Anatolia. Central Anatolia has some of the earliest evidence of agricultural societies outside of the Fertile Crescent and thus is a key region in understanding the early spread of farming. While archaeological evidence points to cultural continuity in Central Anatolia, due to the lack of genetic data from pre-farming individuals, it remains an open question whether and to what scale the development of the Anatolian Neolithic involved immigrants from earlier farming centres and mixing with the local hunter-gatherers. To answer this question, they compared the genetics of a 15,000-year-old Anatolian hunter-gatherer to early farmers from the region. Here we report the first genome-wide data from a 15,000-year-old Anatolian hunter-gatherer and from seven Anatolian and Levantine early farmers. We find high genetic continuity, around 80-90%, to between the hunter-gatherers and the early farmers of Anatolia and detect two distinct incoming ancestries, an early Iranian Caucasus-related one and a later one linked to the ancient Levant. Our results suggest a limited role of human migration and the emergence of agriculture in central Anatolia. The authors expand on this, noting, Our results provide the genetic support for archaeological evidence, suggesting that Anatolia was not merely a stepping stone and a movement of early farmers from the Fertile Crescent into Europe, but rather a place where local hunter-gatherers adopted ideas, plants and technology that led to agricultural subsistence. Now that we know a good amount about the early European farmers, what did they look like? Well, obviously it was thousands of years ago, but this is a reconstruction of what a Neolithic farmer from Europe may have looked like, which is interesting to note. The spread of early European farmers was one of the great transitions in the history of Europe, but a few thousand years after the early farmers, there was another major transition with the spread of steppe people and steppe cultures and steppe ancestry across Europe. The Yamnaya culture was influential in this, but what was the Yamnaya culture and who were the Yamnaya people? To find out, please click here. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell and tell your friends and family about this channel, and I'll see you next time.